Peace be to you. I am Ben Thompson, and I am a free citizen of America. And today, I'd like to talk about something very f important. And it is something that is highly offensive to the Lord. And that is our, our agricultural system. As we talked about before, an agrarian society is the highest form of civilization when man rejects an agrarian society, it can only turn to one of two ways. A hunter-gatherer society, which is acceptable, but a lot of things cannot be preserved due to the mobile nature, and it also focuses on primarily hunting animals, which, though it is given to the Lord, the Lord would rather have us uh, avoid doing that as, mu as much as possible. The other extreme is a mercantile society, which is the far worst form of society ever because it creates an entire mercantile class. Mercantile means merchant. Now I'm not talking about your average businessman. In the old, in the old days, there were many, many businessmen and they ran small family businesses. Then those, and some of those men became extremely powerful in wealth and sought to dominate other people and these super mega uh, corporations formed. Those are merchants. True merchants. A mercantile society is based off of money because we are, because the merchants have deceived us into trading everything of value for worthless money. And that is why I say an agrarian society is the highest form of society that God has given to man. Now, as I said before, there is something highly offensive about our modern agriculture system. It is highly offensive to the Lord. And that is, there's two sides to it, of it. There's our procedure, and the for the for our 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 harvesting system then there's the animal system now both have problems but the worst part is the animals and that is because of the way we are doing things the lord never intended when he said for us to use animals he did not intend for our system that we're using now. It is a horrible system. I've seen it with my own eyes. We have feedlots, overcrowding, overpopulation in among animals. And goes with it we have horrible animal abuse. The Lord prescribed in the Torah a way for us to do things. The Lord doesn't want the animal to suffer. The Lord doesn't want there to be the blood to remain with the body. Uh, the Lord doesn't want us to use sick or dead animals for for our consumption. And primarily, the Lord w uh, wants the animal to have as little pain as possible. Now, in my opinion, the halal which is the Islamic method of dealing with animals is the most accurate form. There's still some problems with it. And then, then after that is the kosher. I would like to take the best parts of the halal and the kosher and put them together. And if we return to this system, then we will um, no longer be offensive to the Lord in that manner. And uh, I, I say this with a hundred percent seriousness. Part of the reason for the destruction that we will face is because of how we are treating our animals today. It's not the whole. Th it's not the whole reason, but it's just, it is certainly part of it. Now, the first problem is the overcrowding. We have so many animals trying to squeeze them all into one little area. That is offensive to the Lord. 
animals are supposed to be grass fed therefore they need to be in free range and they need to be have enough space to move to, to be able to feed off the grass the first thing we need to do is to stop buying meat that is from feedlots so if you buy meat make sure it is grass fed second thing is and this is where I like the halal method now of course um, there are people who say they're halal when they're not actually halal so you need to do your research personally I'm I'm a vegetarian except that I eat fish so I'm actually pescatarian but if I eat meat I would I would only buy from true certified source halal the next thing is that the animal needs to be slaughtered by hand we herd all of these, we pack all these animals into slaughterhouses and mass slaughter them right in front of each other and that is very traumatic for the animal not, not to mention the abuse the animal suffers in the feedlot all the way to the slaughterhouse horrible abuse from start to finish Now, using in the halal method, the true halal method, an animal is supposed to be taken by itself into an isolated area where other animals can't see it. Then you're supposed to lay the animal on the ground, and you're supposed to, using two fingers, supposed to hold the chin, and with light and cover, and with the other hand, cover the eyes of the animal, either using the ears. Or, some, or holding some other thing to cover the eyes of the animal. Now, of course, they say a prayer, which I don't have a problem with. In fact, in many cultures, and this shows that there's possibly some truth to it, you're supposed to bless the animal to God and thank God for this animal because the animal does belong to God. You cover the eyes of the animal and say a prayer, and this will cause the animal to submit it'll be in a calm relaxed position no struggling and that's part of the other reason for the the, the two finger method is so that the neck is really strong and if the animal is struggling you cannot hold the animal's head using those two fingers while holding the, the head back and the if the animal does not submit it will not be calm you can and you cannot any struggle to hold it using the two finger method then the animal is supposed to be sent back to the herd and you're supposed to get a new animal because that means that animal is not ready to give its life now the when the animal is ready to submit, it's, it'll be calm. It'll have its eyes covered. You never let it see the knife. And they, they even give the the water, the, the, I mean the animal, some water to drink before before you submit it. They, they say it creates some type of bond. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. It doesn't say that in the Torah, as far as I can, can tell. But the point is, is that the animal is supposed to be calm and relaxed. And then, um, <clears throat> you, um, you cover its eyes and you take, then you take the knife out so it does not see the knife. And you do two quick slits. One, two. Really quick, across the neck and the blood comes out. And the animal passes out from, from the quick loss of blood. Now here's where the, the halal method misses one step is that the blood is supposed to be spilled onto the dirt and you're supposed to cover the blood with dirt. The kosher method does that. True kosher. But the, the halal method I, does, does not require that. But it is a less important step as far as the animal is concerned. 
but under my system you would cover the blood with dirt as the Torah commands now that is the that would be a more acceptable way mass production is, is evil before the Lord the Lord we, we're not supposed to be mass slaughtering animals like that we, sh we need to set up a system to where you would have a lot more butcher shops and they would have their own animals and you can go there and select one of course it would be better if you owned it yourself but we're, I don't think we're ready for that at that time so we'll, we'll start with this method, get this method working wherein will have a greater number of butchers with their own animals that they have cared for themselves and then you can select an animal and they will slaughter it for you according to the halal slash kosher method and I, I'm being 100% serious about this our agriculture system needs a major overhaul we need to correct the first thing we need to correct is this is the way we sl slaughter our animals and treat them because their voices are crying unto the Lord and they are crying against us because we are using our money to support it and the Lord will take vengeance for them because they belong to him and he loves them very much Now the Lord has given us animals to use for food and for other things. But the way we have perverted it is evil before the Lord. And we need to return to the halal slash kothar method of dealing with our animals. Now you can actually go. They do have, I know in my area anyway, they do have Islamic shops that are that claim to be halal I would I would try I would uh, investigate I would ask them if, if they are certified halal and uh, who does the certification and I would I would research to see if they are doing it the true halal way because of course you have people who think that it's just slitting the throat when that's not it the true halal method is the way I have talked about. And if you have any questions, you may feel free to ask me. We don't even have to regulate this it, because we vote with our dollars because we are a mercantile society now. We can, we can make changes by using our money. What we buy, what we don't buy. Pe then the people Wherever the money's at the most, that's where the product will be and go. And we can affect great change that way. And I leave with you with this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.